day 11 of our 365 day Bible read. Doesn't it feel so good to be doing something for God? Even though we're reading the Bible, this is doing something for God, as in you're opening the instructions, like the manual to our life, and you're finding out about our life you're finding out what it is that we should be doing we're finding out what it is God wants us to do how he wants us to fulfill his kingdom here like while we're here on earth because this is not our earth this is this is our earth I mean this is not our our home like our final destination like we have our home is up in heaven so it's like we're just passing through here and it's we're finding out what it is God wants us to do while we're passing through this earth here before we get to home up in heaven to our final destination so that feels like really good and that feels great it feels amazing and it's like we're we have 24 hours in a day 365 days in a year so it's great that we can take 25 to 30 minutes out of our entire 24 hours to get some this is like food like put some food in our body like the word is food for our body for our existence so this feels really good that it feels really good to be doing this so I'm excited. I am pumped and I'm excited for you as well on this journey. This is like a big deal and we're going to get through. We're going to read the entire Bible. Like this is like, this is everything. It is. So we're going to dive right in. Today we're going to be reading from Genesis chapter 20, chapters 27 and chapters 28. And then we're going to do the Bible study for Genesis chapters 27 and 28 from the Old Testament. And then we're going to jump to the New Testament and we're going to finish Matthew chapter 9. And we read verse 1 through 18 yesterday and did that Bible study for that part of chapter 9. So now today we're going to read verse um, 19 through 38 of Matthew chapter 9 from the New Testament. And then we're going to do the Bible study for that. And remember, I'm following the reading plan from ESV.org. It's the reading plan for the Bible to read the Bible in the entire year, in one year, to read the entire Bible in one year. So yes, and then we're going to do the Bible study for the readings. All right, so let's jump right in. Day 11. Wow. All right, I'm so excited for us. Okay, Genesis chapter 27. Isaac blesses Jacob. When Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called Issa, his older brother, and said to him, My son. And he answered, here I am, he said. Behold, I am old. I do not know the day of my death. And then take your weapons, your quiver, and your bow, and go out to the field and hunt game for me, and prepare for me delicious food, such as I love, and bring it to me so that I may eat, that my soul may bless you before I die. Now Rebekah was listening when Isaac spoke to his son Issa. So when Issa went to the field to hunt for game and bring it, Rebekah said to her son Jacob, I heard your father speak to your brother Issa. Bring me game and prepare for me delicious food that I may eat it and bless you before the Lord before I die. Now therefore, my son, Obey my voice as I command you. Go to the flock and bring me two good young goats so that I may prepare from them delicious food for your father, such as he loves. And you shall bring it to your father to eat so that he may bless you before he dies. 
But Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, Behold, my brother Esau is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. Perhaps my father will feel me and I shall seem to be mocking him and bring a curse upon myself and not a blessing. His mother said to him, let your curse be on me, my son. Only obey my voice and go bring them to me. So he went and took them and brought them to his mother and his mother prepared delicious food such as his father loved. Then Rebekah took the best garments of Esau, her older son, which were with her in the house, and put them on Jacob, her younger son. And the skins of the young goats she put on his hands and on the smooth part of his neck. And she put the delicious food and the bread which he had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. So he went to his father and said, my father and he said here i am who are you my son jacob said to his father i am issa your firstborn i have done as you told me now sit up and eat of my game that your soul may bless me but isaac said to his son how is it that you have found it so quickly my son he answered because the Lord your God granted me success. Then Isaac said to Jacob, Please come near, that I may feel you, my son, to know whether you are really my son Issa or not. So Jacob went near to Isaac his father, who felt him, and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Issa. And he did not recognize him because his hands were hairy like his brother Issa's hands. So he blessed him. He said, are you really my son Issa? He answered, I am. Then he said, bring it near to me that I may eat of my son's game and bless you. So he brought it near to him and he ate and he brought him wine and he drank. Then his father, then his father Isaac said to him, Come near and kiss me, my son. So he came near and kissed him. And Isaac smelled the smell of his garments and blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. May God give you of the dew of heaven and of the fatness of the earth and plenty of grain and wine. Let people serve you and nations bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers and may your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed be everyone who curses you and blessed be everyone who blesses you. As soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, when Jacob had scarcely gone out from the presence of Isaac, his father, Esau, his brother, came in from his hunting. He also prepared delicious food and brought it to his father. And he said to his father, let my father arise and eat of his son's game that you may bless me. His father Isaac said to him, who are you? He answered, I am your son, your firstborn Issa. Then Isaac trembled very violently and said, who was it then that hunted game and brought it to me? And I ate it all before you came, and I have blessed him. Yes, and he shall be blessed. As soon as Issa heard the words of his father, he cried out with an exceedingly great and bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me, even me also, O my father. But he said, Your brother came deceitfully, and he has taken away your blessing. Issa said, is he not rightly named Jacob? For he has cheated me these two times. He took away my birthright, and behold, now he has taken away my blessing. Then he said, Have you not reserved a blessing for me? Isaac answered and said to Issa, Behold, I have made him lord over you, and all his brothers I have given to him for servants, and with grain and wine I have sustained him. What then can I do for you, my son? 
Issa said to his father, have you but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, oh my father. And Issa lifted up his voice and wept. Then Isaac, his father, answered and said to him, Behold, away from the fatness of the earth shall your dwelling be, and away from the dew of heaven on high. By your sword you shall live, and you shall serve your brother. But when you grow restless, you shall break his yoke from your neck. Now Issa hated Jacob because of the blessing with which his father had blessed him. And Issa said to himself, The days of mourning for my father are approaching. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. But the words of Issa, her older son, were told to Rebekah. So she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said to him, Behold, your brother Issa comforts himself about you by planning to kill you. Now, therefore, my son, obey my voice. Arise, flee to Laban, my brother in Haran, and stay with him a while until your brother's fury turns away, until your brother's anger turns away from you and he forgets what you have done to him. Then I will send and bring you from there. Why should I be, be why should I be bereft of you both in one day? Then Rebekah said to Isaac, I loathe my life because of the Hittite women. If Jacob marries one of the Hittite women like these, one of the woman one of the women of the land, what good will my life be to me? Genesis chapter 28. Jacob sent to Laban. Then Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and directed him. You must not take a wife from the Canaanite women. Arise, go to Padaram, to the house of Bethuel, your mother's father, and take as your wife from there one of the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and multiply you, that you may become a company of peoples. May he give the blessing of Abraham to you and to your offspring with you, that you may take possession of the land of your sojournings that God, that God gave to Abraham. Thus Isaac sent Jacob away, and he went to Padan Aram, to Laban, the son of Bethuel, the Aramean, the Aramean, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob's and Issa's mother. Issa marries an Ishmaelite. Now Issa saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away to Padan, to Padan Aram to take a wife from there, and that as he blessed him, he directed him. You must not take a wife from the Canaanite women, and that Jacob had obeyed his father and his mother and gone to Padam, to Padam Aram. So when Issa saw that the Canaanite women did not please Isaac, his father, Issa went to Ishmael and took as his wife, besides the wives he had, Mahalath, the, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nebloth. Jacob's dream. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he came to a certain place and stayed there the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring. 
Your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in you and your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God, and his is the gate of heaven. So early in the morning, Jacob took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on the top of it. He called the name of the place Bethel, but the name of the city was Luz at the first. Then Jacob made a vow saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and clothing to wear so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone, which I have set up for a pillar, shall be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will give a full tenth to you. All right. So that was from the Old Testament, Genesis chapters 27 and 28. And we will now do the Bible study for Genesis chapters 27 and 28. And then we'll go on and we'll read, we'll finish Matthew chapter 9 and then do the Bible study for that. Genesis chapter 27 Bible study. Before Isaac died, what did he want Issa to do for him? Isaac wanted Issa to hunt and cook his favorite meal. What did Rebecca want for Jacob? She wanted Issa's blessing for Jacob. How did Rebecca accomplish this? She disguised Jacob in Issa's clothes and put animal skins on his neck and hands to make him hairy. She cooked the meal. What was Isaac's blessing for Jacob? Jacob would receive the fatness of the land, plenty of grain and wine, nations would serve him and bow down to him, and would be master over his brethren. What was Isaac's blessing for Issa? Issa would live by the sword and serve his brother. What did Issa resolve to do to Jacob after Isaac's death? Issa wanted to kill Jacob after Isaac died. Where did Rebekah send Jacob? Rebekah had Jacob go to her brother's house in Haran. What was her reaction to Isaac for sending Jacob away? She did not want Jacob to have a wife from the daughters of Heth. Now we're going to read um, Genesis chapter 28 Bible study. Chapter 28. When Jacob left, where did Issa go to find a wife? Issa went to find a wife from the descendants of Ishmael. Why did he go there? Issa wanted to please his father, Isaac, by not taking a Canaanite wife. Who did Issa take as a wife? Issa took Mahalath, the daughter of Ishmael, his uncle, the son of Abraham, from Hagar, Sarah's maidservant. What did Jacob dream on the way to Haran? He dreamed of a ladder going to heaven with angels ascending and descending on it. What was he promised in his dream? 
His descendants would be as the dust of the earth, and all the families of the earth would be blessed. What did Jacob call the place? Jacob called the place Bethel. What does it mean? Bethel means house of God. Alrighty, so now we are going to go on and read Matthew chapter 9, verse 19 through 38. And that's finishing Matthew chapter 9, because yesterday we read um, verse 1 through 18 of Matthew chapter 9. And then we're going to do the Bible study for it after, of course. Matthew chapter 9, starting at, um, I'm sorry, we're starting at verse 18. We read verse 1 through 17 yesterday, and we're starting at verse 18 through 38 now. A girl restored to life and a woman healed. While he was saying these things to them, behold, a ruler came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. And Jesus rose and followed him with his disciples. And behold, a woman who had suffered from a discharge of blood for twelve years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment. For she said to herself, if only, if only touch, if I only touch his garment, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her, he said, take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. And when Jesus came to the ruler's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, go away for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand. And the girl arose. And the, rep and the report of this went through all that district. Jesus heals two blind men. And as Jesus passed on from there, two blind men followed him, crying aloud, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he entered the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it done to you. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus sternly warned them, See that no one knows about it. But they went away and spread his fame through all that district. Jesus heals a man unable to speak. As they were going away, behold, a demon oppressed man who was mute was brought to him. And when the demon had been cast out, the mute man spoke and the crowds marveled saying, never was anything like this seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, he casts out demons by the prince of demons. The harvest is plentiful. The laborers are few. And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were, they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. All right, so that was the rest of Matthew chapter 9, and we are now going to do the Bible study for Matthew chapter 9, verse 18 through 38. 
Matthew chapter 9. What healed the woman with the flow of blood? The faith in Jesus of the woman with the flow of blood healed her as she touched Jesus' garment. What happened to a young girl who had died? Jesus brought the young girl back to life. What healed the two blind men? The faith of the two blind men in Jesus as the Messiah healed them. What did Jesus ask his disciples to pray? Jesus asked his disciples to pray for God to send more workers to the people for they were ready to accept the gospel and the words of life. All right, so day 11 is complete and we got through this. We are now done for the day and I know um, maybe like some people could be thinking like, oh my goodness, this is only day 11. We have, there's 365 days in a year and we are only through day 11. And like, how am I going to get through this entire year of reading the Bible? It's like, you can do it all. Like anything you set out to do, you set your heart on it, you started doing it, God is going to get you through. So if you can do anything else in your day, anything else in your year, he's going to make sure that you are able to keep this commitment and do this in your year as well. So don't pay attention to the days. I know even though I say what day it is every day, don't even look at that. Just focus on today. Focus on today and don't don't look like forward for all the many more days to come after it. Just focus on today Today is enough for today, and uh, God is going to get us through this year. So we got this. We trust in him. We set out for this commitment, and he is going to make sure we finish it. So no worries. I'm excited for you. I'm excited for me. This is a beautiful journey, and I will see you tomorrow. You are beautiful. You are worthy. You are enough. You matter. God loves you. So do I, and I'll see you tomorrow.